Hi, and welcome back to a brand new section in this course. In the previous section, we learned how to use linear regression to model and predict continuous response variables. But what would happen if we used it to predict categorical variables? Let's find out. In this section, we'll learn to model and predict categorical variables using popular classification algorithms. In this process, we will understand the concepts and the accuracy measures peculiar to classification models. By the end of this section, you would have built predictive models with the caret package and used various features in it, especially parallelization and feature selection techniques. Let's begin our journey with logistic regression and delve in depth into the concepts and the implementation in R. We begin with the concepts, learn how to handle class imbalance, build logistic models, and interpret the results and various accuracy measures, particular to classification models. Finally, we will solve a coding challenge. If we use linear regression to model dichotomous variable, the resulting model might not restrict the predicted y values within 0 and 1. But logistic regression is designed in such a way that the y will always be between 0 and 1. This design is desirable for binary classification because we want to predict the probability of the event where the event could be 1 of the two classes. In order to achieve this, the log odds of the event is modeled. Log odds is nothing but natural log of p by 1 minus p, where p is the probability of the event and it always ranges between 0 and 1. And this is the equation for logistic regression. This equation can be implemented using the GLM function by setting the family argument to binomial. Also, an important caveat is to make sure we set the type option to response when predicting on a logistic regression model. Or else, it will predict the log odds of p, that is, the z value, instead of the probability itself. Let's see how to implement logistic regression and do the diagnostics using the breast cancer dataset in ML Bench package. You will have to install the ML Bench package for this, else you could download it from this link. We have 683 complete observations. The aim is to model and predict if a specimen is benign or malignant. Let's check the structure. The class is the response variable. The explanatory variables are factors as well. When we build a GLM model with factor variables as features, it converts each level in the factor into a dummy binary variable of zeros and ones. Clearly, there seems to be some sort of ordering for all the features, so let's convert them into a numeric variable and remove the ID variable. We should always convert a factor variable to character and then to numeric, else the values can change. I'd like to encode the response into a factor variable of ones and zeros, though this is an optional step. Then we will convert into factor. Check the class distribution. It is approximately in the ratio of one is to two. Clearly, there is a class imbalance. There are two issues we should take care of. Firstly, we build the samples such that both the ones and zeros are in approximately equal proportions. This concern is normally handled through downsampling, downsampling, upsampling, or hybrid sampling. With downsampling, the majority class data are randomly sampled to be of the same size as the smallest class. So in this case, we will randomly pick fewer samples of the benign condition, while with upsampling, additional samples are added to the minority class by sampling with replacement. 
until it reaches approximately the same size as the majority class. But additionally, we need to make sure that the repeated samples stay only in the training data. Let's create the training and test data using the caret package. Let's use the down sample function in caret package. The down sample function requires the y as a factor variable. That is why we converted the class of class variable to a factor in the first place. Now let's do the up sample. The smoke function in dmwr and the rows function in rows package can implement the hybrid models. For now, we will use the downsampled version of the dataset to build the logit model. Note that we have set the family to binomial and the type to response. We have now predicted the probability of the event for each observation. We take the probability cutoff as 0.5 and predict if it is an event or not. That is, if it is benign or malignant. Let's compute the accuracy. We have an accuracy rate of 94%. Let's get the confusion matrix. The confusion matrix reveals a lot of information about the accuracy of the model. For example, the sensitivity is the proportion of actual events that are model predicted as an event. So it is calculated as 70 divided by 70 plus 1, which is 98.59. Likewise, specificity is the proportion of non-events that the model predicted correctly. So in this case, it is 122 divided by 122 plus 11, which is 91.73. Detection rate is the proportion of the whole sample where the events were detected correctly. A widely accepted set of accuracy measures for binary classification are precision and recall in that order. Precision is nothing but out of what we predict as an event. What proportion were actually events? But out of what we predicted as an event, what proportion were actually events? So in this case, it is 70 divided by 70 plus 11. Whereas recall is same as sensitivity that measures what proportion of all actual events were correctly predicted. You could see further explanation of all the metrics in this wiki link. Choosing the best model is sort of a trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. While sensitivity focuses on predicting the events correctly, specificity focuses on the non-events. This is nicely captured by the receiver operating characteristics curve, also called the rock curve. In fact, the area under the rock curve can be used as an accuracy metric and to compare the efficiency of the models. Let's compute them using the information value package. Interpreting the rock plot is somewhat different from a regular line plot because though we have an x and a y axis. We don't read it as, for an x value of 0.25, the y value was 0.9. Instead, what we have here is a line that traces the probability cutoff from 1 at the bottom left to 0 in bottom right. This is a way of analyzing how the sensitivity and specificity performs for the full range of probability cutoff which is from 1 to 0. Ideally, if you have a perfect model, all events will have a perfect probability score of 1, and all non-events will have a score of 0. For such a model, the area under the rock will be a perfect 1. So if we trace the curve from bottom left, the value of probability cutoff decreases from 1 towards 0. If you have a good model, more of the real events should be predicted as events, even with a high cutoff. In that case, the curve will rise steeply, covering a large area before reaching the top right. Therefore, the larger the area under the ROC curve, the better your model is.
We have one final concept left, that is, concordance and discordance. In an ideal world, the probability scores of all true events should be greater than the probability scores of all true non-events. Such a model is said to be perfectly concordant. This phenomenon can be measured by concordance and discordance. Let me describe how it is computed in simpler words. We take all possible combinations of true events and not events. Concordance is the percentage of pairs where true events, probability scores, are greater than the scores of true not events. For a perfect model, this will be 100%. So the higher the concordance, the better the quality of your model. This could be computed using the concordance function, an information value package. Let's quickly solve a mini challenge. Source the R code from the URL or run this code below. Then build logistic models for the following equations. Compute the confusion matrix and compare which model is better in terms of overall accuracy, area under the ROC curve, and concordance. I'll show the answers in a while. Pause the video and give it a try. All right, here is the answer. The training and test data are downsampled. Let's build the logistic models. The models are built. Let's predict on test data. We have the actual and predicted values for both the models. Let's now compute the confusion matrix. So in terms of AUROC, both the models are equally good. But in terms of overall accuracy model, one is better, and in terms of concordance, model two is slightly better. Also, if predicting the malignant tumors accurately is more important, then we should go with model two, which has higher sensitivity of 97%, compared to model one's 92%. Congratulations if you got that right.